Hi there, how are you doing? This is Guido Prola and today I want to talk with you about what I consider one of the most important but also underestimated feature of the modern digital photography, that is the histogram. Now all of you probably know what is the histogram, but I want to show you how you can correctly read it to evaluate your pictures and how you can effectively use it to color correct your pictures. So here we are inside Adobe Photoshop. Now I will show you some black and white pictures, but I want you to look first at the histogram and then at the picture itself. Okay, so let's begin by saying a couple of things about the histogram. The histogram is a graphic representation of all the tonal values of an image. You can first find it on your camera when you're shooting live view, for example, you can look at it before taking your picture, or you can use it to evaluate the pictures right after you take them to correct the exposition. And finally, you can find it in many different applications, such as Photoshop in this case. Probably you already have your histogram here on the top of the right panel when you open Photoshop. If you don't, for some reasons, uh, you can go under Window and Histogram. This is the histogram. As I already said, here are represented all the tonal values of the image. On the extreme left, we have the zero value that is black, while on the extreme right, we have 255 values that is white. This means that in this left part, we have the shadows, here we have the highlights, and in the middle, we have mid-tones, quarter tones, and three-quarter tones. Every of these peaks represent a tone, and the high, the peak reach, represent the number of pixels for that particular tone, for this image. In this first picture, for example, looking only at the histogram, we can see that we have two different volumes, one in the dark side and one in the very bright side of the image. This is a typical situation in the landscape photography, for example, where we have a bright sky and a darker ground. Or it can be representative of a backlight image. We don't know, but we can certainly predict that we have two distinct zones in this image with very different tonal values. Let's see it. Okay, as we can see, this is a landscape picture where this very bright cloudy sky is in contrast with a lot darker ground. When we retouch this image, we can mask these two zones and process them separately if we want. Uh, let's move to another example. Okay, this histogram represents another picture. As before, I have hidden the image to your eyes so that we can concentrate on the histogram. So what we can see looking at it? Well, first of all, we see that the most of this volume is, is exactly in the middle. There are no highlights at all. This horizontal line represents noise more than real data. In the shadows, we have uh, uh, really a little information. So if there are no blacks, no whites, the great part of the image is in the mid-tones area. We are still in front of a low contrast kind of flat image. We now know this is a black and white image. Uh, we know because I tell you. But even if it was a color picture with very contrasting colors, you can be sure that this, this sense of flatness remains. Maybe this depends on the subject itself that is low contrast, but the appealing of the picture solely suffers if we do not make some adjustments. Let's look at the picture. Okay, now everything becomes clear. Here we are in the desert. The atmosphere is sandy, the sunlight is diffused, or we are in the shady side of the mountain. The houses are built on the on a rocky ground and they are made of the same rocks. So here the subject have no contrast at all and this is physiological. What we can try to do here is increasing the contrast by contracting the histogram. Uh, we can do this using the level adjustments, for example, like this. And now it looks a little bit better, but not too much, I would say. 
So in this case, uh, the black and white conversion surely don't work. To make uh, this picture interesting, we have to play with the small column contrast in the detail of the houses uh, or uh, uh, in, the, in this little bit of vegetation, more than try to have a contrast in values that is almost impossible. Okay, here we have a different kind of histogram. This time we can see that we have a distribution of information throughout all the histogram. We have a good amount of dark shadows, even some information in the very dark side of the histogram, and we also have a good distribution in the highlights with also some very bright areas. There are no holes in the highlights nor in the shadows because the histogram is all included in its space between 0 and 255. We have no information in, in the left hand or in the right hand of the x-axis, and this is good. We have uh, two pixels and two volumes uh, we can distinct in this histogram. So probably also in this case, looking at the image, we will be able to see two uh, different major tonalities. And this is also a good thing, in my opinion. So in conclusion, we can say that we are in front of an image with a good contrast uh, a good distribution of information, and probably we can say that this can be a good black and white conversion. Let's see the picture now. So, we see that we have a subject uh, that is well separated from the background, both thanks to uh, an out-of-focus background and a contrast in tones. We can see that the baby is darkened, and the pebbles and the water, and the is also darker than the vegetation in the background. So probably the subject is mostly represented by this left part of the histogram, the vegetation is represented by this peak here, and the brighter foreground, the pebbles and the water, is located in this right part of the histogram. If we want to check if this statement is correct, we can open the curve adjustment with the shortcut Ctrl M on Windows or Command M on Macintosh and pushing this button, we can sample pixels from the image and visualize where they are on the histogram. So here is the subject, here is the vegetation, and here is water and the pebbles, as predicted. Let's move to the next example. Okay, looking at this histogram, we immediately see that a great part of his volume is in this zone. So we are tempted to think that this is a quite dark and low contrast image. But if we look carefully at the stream right, we can barely see a thin line that is on the white tone. This surely means that there are some pixels in this image that are completely white. But the thing that we have to understand very well is that this line that goes up over the top of the histogram, even if it can pass almost unnoticed, is saying us that a huge part of the image is completely white. This because, as I have said before, the height of the pixel represents the number of pixels of that tone. Here this line is very high, so there are a lot of white pixels in this image. The histogram can be misleading at times. A big volume can represent sometimes less pixels than those who are represented by a single line. You have to listen to it as if uh, the highlights of this picture came out on the right side of the histogram, leaving only this line as, as their mark. Let's have a look at the picture now. Okay, as you can see, the sky is completely white. And this is a great portion of the image, not only a few pixels. Maybe this is intentional, maybe I have overexposed the sky so that I can easily mask it and change it with a better one. It doesn't matter. The important is that you always have to take care of these tall bars. Even if they are in the middle of the histogram, they are seeing you that there is a big portion of that image that have the same tone. So always look at your pictures, try to identify the zone that is represented by that bars, 
and decide if the, it is justified or if it is a problem you have to solve. Okay, I think you have enough information now on how to read the composite histogram. Now with these informations you can open your pictures looking at their histograms, concentrate on the values and not on the colors and make your analysis. Try to see if the histogram is predicting what, what the picture shows. You have to understand that an histogram without a picture means nothing, but the histogram plus your experience can say a lot. In this image, for example, I say that probably there was two distinct zones with very different values. This is not written in this histogram because the same histogram can represent an image with a lot of small dark areas and a lot of small bright areas. But it is my experience that tells me that where there is a bright sky, there is an histogram like this. So, you know the kind of pictures you shoot, use your experience, compare the pictures with their histograms and use this combination of information to take the right decision on how to process your pictures. In the second part of this video we will see how we can split a histogram in its different RGB channels and how we can use them to color correct images. Okay, so today we have seen how to read the histogram and why different pictures have different histograms. In the second part of this video we will see how to use the different RGB channels of the histogram to color correct pictures and how drastically we can modify pictures using this tool. So stay tuned because in the next few days I will release the second part of the video. Thanks for now and see you next time!